I'm Dr. Mita Rattan from the Hyperpigmentation Clinic. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. Right, so today's video is a very serious video and it's about how to treat sunburn. I'm on holiday at the moment and it feels like every fifth person I'm walking past has severe sunburn and it's still coming out the following day to lay all day in the sun. Um, I think it's a really important issue um, that we need to discuss and we really need to educate our families and loved ones on to make sure that we're not increasing the risk of skin cancer. Right, so I'm gonna go step by step what's happening to your skin, products you need to use and how you treat it afterwards. If that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. So sunburn is when UVB rays hits the skin. The problem is you don't feel anything and so it can happen all day long. UVB rays leads to burning, UVA rays lead to aging. Again, both are invisible and you don't feel either. This makes it even more scary. Both rays can lead to skin cancer. Another big problem with sunburn is that it can continue to worsen for 72 hours after the initial assault. So when you, for example, you've had sunburn, the worst you can do is to go out into the sun the following day because it's almost like you've had radiation poisoning that is progressively worsening and now you're introducing UVB back to the system again. It's the number one mistake you can make. What you'll notice is that the skin will feel hot, it, will, it can blister, it can flake, it'll feel sensitive. Um, it can be difficult to lay on your back, for example, if it's on your back. That part of the body is difficult to put any pressure on. Now, the important thing to know is just one episode of this, of this blistering, even in childhood, can double your chances of melanoma as an adult, that skin cancer. It's that severe. And this is why, for in, ch in children, for example, we encourage them to wear UV, UV protected tops. Um, and bottoms so you want their shoulders covered that tends to be the first area for children to burn now the rate of cancer drastically increases with the number of these sunburns that you get even as a child so again not only should they be wearing uv protected clothing they want to be wearing a hat and water resistant sunscreen and actually get them addicted to sunscreen too you know make it their responsibility as well to be applying their sunscreen because i feel like even with my children i feel like if I'm doing it for them, then it's like another thing that mommy is telling me off about. But actually when they take responsibility for getting ready in the morning and they've had to put their clothes on and they have to put their hat on, they have to pack their sunglasses and they have to put their sunscreen on and they've both got their own backpacks to go to the swimming pool, I feel like they take a bit more ownership and they like the independence of it. So I say get into good habits really as children and then they're not gonna have the same skin issues that we have. Um, including cancer but also melasma. I always say go for the highest rating of sunscreen. Now I don't just mean SPF 50 because don't forget SPF 50 only relates to UVB protection not UVA protection. UVA protection you want to look for the words broad spectrum and you want PA with four pluses so that that's the maximum protection you can get for UVA rays. Um, it's a little bit annoying you know you know, when I was a child or when I was in my teens, I used to think SPF 50 was broad spectrum. I used to think that was the highest thing you could use, the best thing you could use. But actually, no, that's only for one part of the UV spectrum, UVB rays, not UVA rays. So broad spectrum and PA, ideally with four pluses. If you are prone to melasma, that's when you start to get to pigmentation on the cheekbones. Um, you really need, it's your skin telling you, it's a warning sign that you are not protecting your skin enough and it's only gonna get worse. Those little freckles amalgamate from patches and then start to spread across the face. So not only do you need your broad spectrum SPF 50, this one, this is Dr. V in Zincable, the one we just launched. You also want your anti-melasma sunglasses to basically protect the entire zygoma area. 
um, specific, mainly if you get pigmentation. This is this tends to be um, it tends to happen in women and it tends to happen from mid thirties onwards. So just pay attention to those little freckles on your skin. It's a warning sign. So what you do once you have sunburn, once you realize it's happening, you need to get out of the sun immediately. This is imperative. Then you need to get into a freezing cold shower. You want to vasoconstrict. You want to cool the area because when you vasoconstrict, those blood vessels basically shrink and there's less inflammation taking place in the area. Don't use ice directly onto the skin. The skin has been damaged and compromised. And then when you put ice on, ice is too cold for the skin. It can lead to an ice burn, which uh, we absolutely do not want. So either you wrap it in uh, ice in uh, a thin gauze or just freezing cold shower for as long as you can take it. I would recommend using a 1% hydrocortisone steroid cream at this point. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory cream. On top of that, I, I would use an aloe vera gel not a moisturizer at this point because a moisturizer is going to occlude heat and the, the thing we're trying to do right now is to remove heat so i would use the steroid cream then i would use the aloe gel and i put a fan or air conditioning on the back or whichever part of the body it is um, to just allow the what will happen is water will essentially evaporate on the skin and will take heat away with it which is exactly what you want to happen after a few hours of doing this and cooling the temp the body down cooling the area down then you can apply then you can apply a moisturizer look for a nafe safe moisturizer that means no dnh alcohol no fragrance no essential oils my favorites would be things like cetraban or cerave this is going to create a healing environment for the skin without trapping heat because at this point you should have for a few hours at least and cooling the skin down. Avoid any balms or any oils because that can retain heat, the exact opposite of what we're trying to do. You need to drink plenty of water because again, the skin has been damaged and one of the functions of the skin is to trap water. Uh, in the body. Now once that's, that barrier has been damaged, you're going to be losing water and losing electrolytes. So drink plenty of water, sleep on the side of the body that has not been burned, so less irritation, and keep the AC on all night. I would highly recommend you take painkillers such as paracetamol because it can be very painful. If you feel like you're getting prickly heat sensation, then you may also want to take an antihistamine. If you feel like you're having an allergic reaction, um, then I would also recommend taking antihistamine. If the skin is a blistering, this is basically the body's way of creating a sterile environment to, to for the skin below to heal. When If you pop that blister or you pick at the blister, you are introducing a contamination, you're contaminating that sterile environment. You're introducing bacteria into the area and can lead to an infection, which is the worst thing that you can do to sunburnt skin, you know? So just let your skin do its thing, let it blister, let it heal. Um, when the blister, when the skin below has healed 100%, then the blister will naturally fall off. This is your skin's own mechanism for wound healing, so don't get involved. The mistake I see also being made is people not wearing their lip SPF 50. This, the, the epidermis on the lip is the thinnest of the whole face, of the whole body and it pigments quickly, especially for skin of color. Um, so make sure you're wearing your SPF 50. Don't forget, I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video to ask your questions. Uh, don't forget to download your free guide, The Skin of Color, which is down below. I'm on Instagram, uh, Skincare by Dr. V and the Hyperpigmentation Clinic. I'm also on TikTok, Dr. Mita Ratan. Please write down below which other videos you want me to make for you. I'm trying to increase our number of videos to five videos a week if I can, but I need content ideas from you to make sure I am serving you to the best of my ability. Thank you so much.